What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Show. In 2021, hardware developer Easy Team released the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. This came as a successor to their 2016 Easy Flash Omega. This update to the Omega brings a few more enhancements, such as rumble for games that require it, and a toggleable mode that allows the cart to serve as a DS rumble pack, expansion pack, and flashable cartridge. The team is also allowed for the kernel to be open sourced, allowing for a possibility of even more enhancements and tweaks. To this end, a software developer by the name of Stereophonic took it upon himself to expand on the kernel with some tweaks and features of his own. In this video, I will walk you through the process of getting your Omega Definitive Edition updated for 2022 and beyond. This will include installing the custom simple firmware. I'll also give you some simple tips to get you started after setup. Link to the tools used in the description below. Getting started, you'll want to make sure that you have a large enough SD card to hold your games. I recommend getting a micro SD card that is 32 gigabytes or more. If you're interested in playing the emulated games on the flash cart, bump this up to 64 gigabytes. This will allow you to get a full set of games for the Game Boy Advance, then the full set of games for the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Nintendo NES, Master System, Game Gear, and more. The developer recommends you format the card based on its size as depicted on screen. In this example, I use a 64 gigabyte card, so I will format it as XFAT with the name EasyFlash underscore ODE. At this point, there will be a two-step flashing process. You'll be flashing the most up-to-date OEM firmware, then flashing the simple firmware and theme over it to gain the extra benefits. Head to the webpage for the Omega Definitive Edition firmware. Here you will find the latest firmware, which is of the time of this video, kernel 1.03, firmware 6. You'll also want to download the cheat library and thumbnails pack down below on screen. Extract the firmware onto the root of the SD card. Pop the SD card into your flash cart and power it on. As the cart powers on, hold the R button down to access the cart's flashing mode then press the A button to begin the flashing process. Once this is complete, you can quickly check to see that you're on the updated version of the firmware. Power off the console, then place the SD card back into your PC for the next step. Head to Stereophonics page on the GBA Temp forums, then scroll down to grab the simple DE theme and firmware. In this next step, you'll be extracting the zip file alongside the cheats and themes that you've downloaded previously. Delete the firmware on the SD card, then open the simple DE zip file. Extract the backup and system folders onto the root of the SD card. From here, you can choose between the simple light and dark themes. In this example, I'll choose the dark theme. Extract the bin file of your choosing, then delete the extension of the file so that it reads easykernelnew.bin. Navigate to the system folder, then open and extract the image folder within. Mm -hmm. 
extract the cheat folder. If you want to play MSX games, you'll need to download an additional BIOS file. This web page will be listed in the description below. Extract the MX1 ROM from the zip and into the plug folder. Pop the SD card back into your flash card and flash the simple theme. The addition of the simple theme will add a slew of additional emulators to your Easy Flash cart. Here's the complete listing of each of the compatible extensions for emulators and media players. While there are many different music players and image programs, I'll only be talking about the console-related content. Place all of your ROM files onto the SD card. The file system supports creating subfolders as you wish. Pressing the LNR button on the file browser will cycle through the various tabs within the kernel's menu. You have the SD card for games, the NOR flash for direct game loading, system config tabs, and the help section for the hotkeys. Pressing A will open a directory or file, while the B button will have you go back a page or cancel. On the SD card tab, you can toggle over a page by pressing the left and right button on the D-pad. Pressing Start will open up a recently played listing with the last 10 games played. Pressing the Select button with the GBA game highlighted will toggle an associated thumbnail. Pressing L and Start with a game highlighted will give you the option to delete the file. Upon highlighting the file and pressing the A button, a submenu will pop up with a few more options. You may start the game with Clean Boot or boot the game with add ons included. You may write a game to the NOR Flash to make use of its special functionality. The same game can also be written to the NOR Flash with add ons included. You may change the save type and enable cheats from the database. On the NOR Flash tab, you'll have a listing of games that can boot near instantaneously. You must use this mode in order to play 64 megabyte movie ROMs. It must also be used for the GBA to DS transfer functionality for Pokemon games. You have a few options in its submenu. You can boot the game directly delete files, and load or save game data for use with the link function. You may also format the NOR, but keep in mind that the process will take four minutes to complete. Do not power off the console during formatting. Doing so will damage the NOR flash. On the settings tab, you can set the time, language, and fast patch settings. Under the add-on section, you can set extra functionality to be added to the boot with add-ons function over on the SD card. Sleep in menu key combinations may also be set here. You may enable the real-time clock for games that require it or disable it to reduce power consumption. On the next settings tab, there will be options to enable auto saving and mode B settings. You can change how the onboard LED displays and set the hard reset and backup function. 
Finally, on the Help tab, you can see a list of hotkeys for the cart as well as a QR code for the online manual. The Definitive Edition is capable of playing most Game Boy Advance games without issue. This includes GBA video and files that have been converted to play with this format. Game files must be up to 32 megabytes in size. Files that are larger than 32 megabytes are not supported from the SD card. However, if you flash a larger file to the NOR flash, you'll be able to load these files. Games that have special sensors and hardware features will run, but are unplayable in various states. Enabling the boot with add-on option in the menu will allow you to use save states and cheats. In order to access this menu in game, press the L, R, and Start buttons simultaneously. Saving and loading states must be done through the menu and have no associated hotkeys. You'll also gain the ability to reset to the main menu. Through Jagoomba Color, Game Boy and Game Boy games can be played on the Definitive Edition without issue. Games are run on a 1x1 one one pixel mode, and you aren't allowed to scale the image beyond this. Pressing the L and R button will pull up Jagoomba's menu, allowing you to set and change a number of settings. You may set Turbo, change the display settings such as gamma and the palettes, and various other emulator settings and hacks. If you play games which have a Super Game Boy border, priority can be set on how it appears on screen. Jagoomba has maximum compatibility settings on by default if you choose to not mess with them. You may also save and load states from within the emulator, sleep the console, restart the game, or exit to the kernel. Through Pocket NES, NES games can be played on the Definitive Edition. However, a number of considerations should be taken in mind. Since the image is scaled to fit the screen using GBA hardware, sprites and on-screen text will appear to be slightly crushed. The scaling will also have a flicker applied to it, which works better for handheld screens and much worse for larger panels. Sound is inaccurate, and some advanced mapper games lack the full support and will glitch out accordingly. FDS games are also not supported and cannot be loaded. Pressing the L and R buttons will pull up Pocket NES's menu. Here you will be able to tweak options in a similar manner to Jagoomba. I recommend if you are playing on a consoleized solution or the analog pocket and docked mode to go into the display settings and turn off flicker. You can keep the scaling to have slightly crushed sprites or give the unscaled option a try. If you select Unscaled, sprites will retain their original form, but you will need to use the L and R buttons to manually scroll the screen downwards and up in order to follow the gameplay. States can be manually saved and loaded within the menu, similar to Goomba. Through Pogo Shell, various other consoles can be played on the Definitive Edition. This includes the Master System, Game Gear, SG-1000, ColecoVision, and MSX-1. These emulators will have some of the caveats that exist with Pocket NES. Crushed sprites and sound inaccuracies will remain a slight issue to look out for. MSX games mostly work, but some will have incomplete button mappings. Given this, general game accuracy is pretty good across the board for these consoles. As with the Pocket NES, I recommend you head into the settings and turn off Flickr if you are using a consoleized solution or the analog pocket. You may also want to swap the A and B buttons on your controller. You may save and load states within the emulator Save Memory Manager or save states in game by pressing R and Select and R and Start. 
ZX Spectrum games can be accessed and played, but you will need to figure out how to set up the button configurations or use the on-screen keyboard to get them going. There are a few more consoles supported via Pogo Shell. However, these emulators all suffer from loading issues, severe slowdown, and various sound and video inaccuracies. These emulators have long since been abandoned, and no one should expect an update to any of them in the near future. For GBA games that have save support, saving your game will write a .sav file to the system slash saver folder. Saves created by emulator will be written as .esv files and will be saved within the same folder. .sav files can be moved to and from the SD card and backed up or transferred to other compatible carts or emulators. Make sure you're matching the file name of the save file to the name of the ROM to get them going. Transferring files from the Definitive Edition to the Mr. or the Visual Boy Advance is as simple as copying over the .sav file. This concludes the tutorial for the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to get a couple of cool things out of this video. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Do you have a game for me that you would like to recommend? Any questions for me concerning this video? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, consider dropping a sub or a like. Also, why not check this video out? Peace.